Good afternoon, everyone. So my talk today is will focus on energy options. And unfortunately, it isn't going to solve the current energy crisis, crisis that we're witnessing at the moment, but it will help to identify areas inside the farm gate where you can try to improve energy efficiencies with the overall aim of reducing your energy costs. So we all know it makes no sense whatsoever to waste energy. So therefore, any small steps that we can take to increase energy efficiency or to reduce your overall energy usage will be a positive step forward. So to get straight into the energy costs of pig production, a Chaga survey carried out in 2012 on 23 pig farms throughout the country found that the average energy usage to produce one pig was approximately 28 kilowatt hours. So this figure is still relevant today and it is consistent in what we would see in the likes of Northern Ireland and the UK. However, the study did highlight a huge variation in the energy usage ranging from 18 up to 45 kilowatt hours per pig produced. So that high variation from one farm to another suggests that a greater emphasis needs to be put on energy efficiencies on Irish pig farm. And to put a monetary figure on the pig production energy costs, data from the 2021 EPM report shows that it costs €6.43 per pig produced. So obviously today's price has further skyrocketed and current energy quotes are coming in in excess of 40 cent per kilowatt hour versus the 25 cent um, per kilowatt hour in 2021. So obviously for energy intensive businesses like pig farms, these costs can be crippling. So to give you an example and put them new end contract rates into real time figures, I've used the following example. So it is based on a 600 sow unit. So going off previous energy rates and assuming that two thirds of our energy is used at a day rate of 15.8 cent and one third of our energy is used at a night rate of 8.6 cent. That means that that unit had a monthly ESB bill of 5,282 euro. So now if we do the same calculation with new energy rates of 44 cent as a day rate and 16.6 cent as a night rate, the same unit now has a monthly energy bill of 13,726 euro. So therefore, the average ESB bill has increased by 8,444 euro per month or over a 12 month basis, that's over 100,000 euro. Or if we break it down on a per pig basis, it's an additional 6.9 cent per kilo's dead weight. So from this example alone, you can see the importance of improving energy efficiencies and reducing your overall energy usage. So the rest of my presentation today is broken down into three sections. So looking at short, medium and long term steps to try improve our energy efficiency and to reduce our overall energy usage. Taking into account the financial crisis the industry has gone through in the last number of months. So the first step um, is to monitor our energy usage on our own farm. And while this might seem very simple, it will provide the basis of good energy management. So things like organizing your ESB bill at office level, doing regular meeting readings, and not just relying on your utility bills, and then carrying out an energy audit on your farm. So energy audits not only tell you where the energy is being used, but it will also highlight areas where potential savings can be made. So the SEAI, through the Support Scheme for Energy Audits, offer financial support for small and medium enterprises to get an energy audit done. So the application and the approval process is quick and easy. And in most cases, the financial support provided by the SEAI will actually cover the entire cost of the energy audit. So support is issued in the form of a voucher, which is awarded to the applicant, who will then use the voucher to pay the auditor once the audit is completed. So the auditor will claim the cost of the voucher then from the SEAI. So like all schemes, there is an eligibility criteria and they are as follows. So one, that you're a non-obligated entity, meaning that you are not under any obligations to carry out an energy audit on your business. Second, that you're tax compliant. Third, that you're registered in the Republic of Ireland. And fourth, and one that we can definitely, the majority of us um, don't have to worry about, is that we spend at least 10,000 euro 
on energy per year at the site being audited. So for more information on this, you can go onto the SEAI website where there's plenty of information there. And that's where you'll also find the application form too. So the second option in terms of short term steps you can take is to benchmark. So benchmark your performance with the industry standards. So do you know how much energy it takes to produce a pig on your farm? So research has shown us that there's a huge variation in energy uses, usage, as I've mentioned earlier on, that can range from anything from 18 right up to 45 kilowatt hours. And basing that on today's energy costs, that can equate to a substantial difference of over 170,000 euro between a producer that can produce a pig at 18 kilowatt hours versus the pig at 45 kilowatt hours. So if you take one thing away from today's talk, it would be figure out where you stand in that range, because if you are at the higher end of the scale, there's a lot of money going to waste every year on your unit. So that brings me on to the next step then, and this one is in terms of understanding your ESB bill. And there's two terms that producers should familiarize themselves with and understand. So the first one is your maximum import capacity or your MIC. And this is the upper limit on the total electrical demand that you can place on the network system. So it should be high enough to meet your energy requirements of your business. And as a general rule of thumb, electrical providers would suggest that your MIC be set at about 5% above your highest electrical demand in the past year. However, if the MIC is too high, you may be paying for more capacity than, than you actually require. And if the MIC is too low, you may incur an excess charge. And we'll look at some of them figures in a second. Um, and then the second term I'd like you to familiarize yourself is with is wattless charges. So on large commercial pig farms, there are likely to be items off electrical equipment that will require wattless energy to operate. So wattless energy is measured separate from your general units. And if you exceed a certain limit during a certain period, it will or may give rise to separate charges. So just to give you an example, I've used an ESB bill from a pig unit, and I just want to draw your attention to the standard charges and other items. So this is where you'll find the two terms like um, your MIC and your excess wattless. So firstly, to look at MIC. So for this particular unit, they have an allowance of 100 kVA within the 31 day period. During that period, they've exceeded this allowance by 26 kVA at a rate of 14 euro 35 cent, which means that that excess charge during this one billing period of 31 days comes in at 373 euro 21 cent. So similar for excess wattless then, this unit has exceeded it by 6,156 units, and it means that they have an excess charge there of just under 60 euro for this billing period. This might seem relatively small, but when we add these up on a monthly basis, it comes into a total of 432 euro per month, or on a 12 month basis, it comes in at a total of 5,184 euro per year. So it's really important to examine your ESB bills over a period of time and see are these excess charges a familiar um, item on your bill. And if they are, it's important that you speak to your electrical provider and your electrician to see is there any way that you can reduce these costs on your ESB bill. Now we'll take a look at some medium term steps. So firstly, things like maintenance, repairs and cleaning, they're all essential parts of reducing waste, wasted energy on your units. So things like checking the accuracy of your controls on your farms, check the sensors that they're correctly positioned and that they're kept clean. And then it's also critical to check if the ventilation system is working in tangent with the heating system throughout the whole unit. So obviously the ventilation system may control the house temperature, but that will be done at a massive cost to the heating system if the two are not working in tangent with each other. In terms of insulation then, so check the insulation to see if there has been damaged by pests. And then also check to see your max and your min thermometers so to see if there's a large fluctuation between day and nighttime temperature on your units. And then to also see, is it worth replacing poorly insulated doors throughout the unit? 
And in terms of LED lighting, we're all familiar with this technology and it's come on leaps and bounds in the last 10 years. Um, so it's definitely one that you should be using on your pig units at the moment. The next step I want to look at is the temporary business energy support scheme. So this was a scheme was announced on budget day and it's a new scheme for supporting small and medium enterprises that are facing rising energy bills. So I've placed it in the medium term category for the moment as it's still waiting EU state aid approval, but it will be administered by the revenue commissioners and will operate on a self-assessment basis. So the scheme will operate by comparing the average unit price for the relative bill period in 2022 with the average unit price in the corresponding re reference period in 2021. So in order to be eligible for the scheme, the average unit price must have increased by more than 50%, and then claims can be made up to 40% of the amount of the increase in the bill. However, that will be capped at 10,000 euro per month per trade, and there will also be an overall cap on the total amount that any one business can apply for. So the payments will be backdated to September 22, and they will run until at least February 2023, with the potential for that scheme being further extended. Um, so businesses will be required to register for the scheme and to make claims within the required time period. Sorry. So in order to make sure that you're ready, ensure that you have the following documents, your tax clearance cert, and a copy of your energy bills from 2021 and 2022. So the last step in terms of our medium steps that we can take um, is just a quick note on on-farm generators. So obviously a generator is a very practical investment for all farmers. So it's important that you make sure your generator is the correct size for your current and future needs of your unit. And your licensed electrician will help you or will be able to help you to determine the power needs and match them then with the power output of the generator you select. If you are using a generator, it's important to make sure that you get a licensed electrician to wire up the generator. And if you're using it as your main source of energy supply, you must inform the ESB um, to ensure the safety of the ESB networks. And then lastly, just a quick note on the generator to make sure that it's well maintained and serviced all the time. So the likes of this generator here might have been put in from day one and just mightn't have received too much TLC since that time. So if you are relying on your generators, you need to make sure that they're well maintained and serviced regularly. The next step then is to consider looking at long term steps to reduce um, your energy costs. And one of these steps is using some renewable energy systems like solar panels. So solar panels are well proven technology at this stage, and I know you all know what they are and the basics of how they work. But I just want to give you some up to date information in terms of planning permission and funding that's available. So previously, rooftop panels larger than 12 square meters on homes and 50 square meters on business required planning permission. However, the new regulations have, that have passed now, this requirement is no longer needed unless you fall into one of the SSZ zones, which is no, which are known as the solar safeguarding zones. So just to be aware that there's a 43 of these zones throughout the country, and generally they're based around areas like airports, military barracks, or hospital, hospital helipad areas. In terms of grants then, and I have mentioned other grants in the conference proceedings, but just to bring, I suppose, one of these um, to your attention is the TAMS grant. So again, as announced on budget day, um, solar panels are to be grant aided at a rate of 60% for all eligible farmers and solar panel applications then will fall under a new standalone investment ceiling of 90,000 euro. So this will come into play next year in the new TAM scheme. In terms of predictability, in terms of the output then per kilowatt hour. So for example, if we had a pig farm that play, put in place a 100 kilowatt PV array, that would produce approximately 93,000 kilowatt hours of daytime electricity per year. So that would generate anywhere in the region between 20 to 30% of the farm's annual requirement. 
So just to note that it is very difficult to put a system into place that would generate 100% of the farm's requirement. For example, things like roof space would be an issue there. And then finally, just to end on an um, example, looking at costings, funding and payback of that system. So the 100 kilowatt system would come in anywhere between 90 to 100,000 euro. So it's important that you do shop around there and do see what is available. In terms of payback, that would be coming in at anywhere between four to seven years. With energy prices the way they are at the moment, that could be clawed back a little closer to the four year period. And then just other advantages to be aware of as well, that the VAT can be claimed back in year one. And also it is possible to um, get accelerated capital allowance. So that can write off the whole cost in one year where it normally would be spread over an eight year period. So that concludes my presentation. I would just like to end on the note where I know it is hard at the moment, but it is important to try to remain positive and focus on areas inside your own farm gate that you can control in terms of improving energy efficiency and to reduce your overall energy usage. And any small step that you can take to do, achieve these, um, achieve the improved efficiency and over reducing your overall energy usage will be a positive step forward. Thank you very much for your attention.